Sign up for prize picks using code NBA Goober for 100% deposit match up to $100. Link is in my description. Sup, dude. Jason Williams is one of the most entertaining dudes to ever grace the court. The 6'1 guard was a magician with the basketball, pulling off moves that would make the crowd go absolutely batshit crazy. The highlights on your screen are an example of this. Insane no look behind the back passes, crazy handles, this pass fake into a layup. Oh my god, this white man was dirty. Just listen to the crowd roar after this pass. A nice feed from Jason Williams to Thunderbird. The people loved him, like really loved him. His street ball play style was a breath of fresh air for NBA fans. A player he got compared to a lot was none other than Pistol Pete Maravich, who also played the game with an abundance of creativity pulling off wild passes, dribbles, and shots. One of the toughest highlights I've ever seen came from White Chocolate. He was coming down on a fast break, hit a mean crossover, and left Gary Payton in the dust. If you're unfamiliar with Gary Payton, he's the greatest point guard defender of all time, so that should show you how filthy Jason's moves were. Highlights like that skyrocketed his fan base. By the end of his rookie season, his number 55 jersey was a top 5 seller among all players. Fun fact, I bought this shirt at a thrift shop for like 10 bucks. It's hard as fuck. And I also have this one, which is equally as hard. Mr. Williams stood for something greater than stats. His game was simply fun to watch. Like sure, there are plenty of better players, but nobody put on a show like him. In addition to that, he was a really funny, charismatic dude. There's not a lot to hate about him. During his rookie year, he was playing 36 minutes a night, averaging about 13 points, 6 assists, and 2 steals. These were great numbers for a rookie, getting him to second place in Rookie of the Year voting. While he had a very impactful first year, Jason also had a huge weakness in his game that plagued him basically his whole career. His first year, he shot 37% from the field and 31% from three. His true shooting percentage was 48%. For comparison, Dylan Brooks' true shooting percentage is 48% this season. The dude couldn't throw a rock in the ocean, but who cares? His highlights make me go, ooh, ah. And that's all that matters. That year, the Kings actually made the playoffs, but they lost to the Jazz in the first round. Each year he was with the Kings, they made the playoffs, but they weren't ever able to get very far, losing again in the first round his second year, and then losing in the second round his third year. His second season wasn't exactly the greatest. He shot with less efficiency and turned the ball over close to four times a game, leading to a reduced role in his third year. His third year started off with a five-game suspension for failing to comply with the NBA's anti-drug treatment plan that he was placed in. He was put in this program because when he was in college, dude got suspended three times for smoking that Mary Jane. After the suspension, Jason went on to play about 30 minutes a night, averaging an underwhelming nine points and five assists. His three years with Sacramento were filled with crazy highlights, but he was just too young and didn't fit with the team's future. Sacramento wanted less of a wild card running point, so they sent Jason packing to Memphis in exchange for Mike Bibby. The season following Jason being traded, the Kings actually made it all the way to the Western Conference Finals. But then they lost to Kobe and Shaq in a series that is very controversial. Sorry, Kings fans. You guys are doing great this year, though. With the Grizzlies, Jason gradually started shooting more efficiently and became a much better playmaker Maker, turning the ball over a lot less. There wasn't a ton of team success when he was with Memphis, but as a player, Jason improved his skills tremendously. He was getting away from being that dumb young guard, making stupid decisions, and turning into a more mature, complete basketball player. After four decent seasons in Memphis, he was traded to Miami to play alongside a young Dwayne Wade and an aging Shaq. Jay Will would go on to have the greatest season of his career. He was the third leading scorer on the team, averaging a respectable 12 points and 5 assists and he had the most efficient season of his career, shooting 44% from the field and 37% from three. Shaq said he loved playing with Jason because all he had to do was put his hand in the air and Jason would get him the ball. Dwayne Wade also had high praise for him, saying that he was vital for their team's success. Come playoff time, the Heat steamrolled their way through each opponent, making it all the way to the finals. Dirk and the Mavs couldn't keep up with the Heat, losing 4-2, bringing Jason his first and only championship, capping off a great season and basically his career. After that ring, his time in the NBA slowly came to a close, but the way it all played out was kind of perfect. He first came into the NBA as a young fan favorite, but still had work to do in terms of his game, so he gets traded to Memphis, 
Memphis was like his training grounds, he was Poe, the Grizzlies were Master Shifu, and he was ready to become the Dragon Warrior. Then after he was done training in Memphis, he was traded to Miami, where the training paid off and he became a champion. White Chocolate was never a superstar or even an all-star in terms of stats, but his creativity and flash impacted the game tremendously. He brought the NBA tons of fans and inspired a generation of players to use their creativity on the court. Hey, another guy that was super creative was Kareem, so click right there. Right there. To watch the video I made about him, hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching. Bye, dude.